Hey guys, this is my review of the new Zoids Wild Cannonball. Zoids Wild is going in kind of a new direction with the new Zero anime and models that look a bit more mechanical and actually have guns now. And the Cannonball is really the first of these new models. There's also the Beast Liger, which we'll get to soon, but honestly, I thought this one was more interesting, so I wanted to check it out first. So, we're going to unbox it, and then we'll check it out in action, plus we'll take a look at how it stacks up against the Cannon Fort and the D-Bison from the older lines. So, first of all, quite a few subtle uh, design changes to the box here. Uh, the not-so-subtle thing is, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that the overall feel of the box art here is quite different. Uh, it's just darker overall, and you've got this sort of ruined cityscape here that looks a lot more like a war scene. The numbering, though, just continues for the Zoids Wild line here. It says here ZW26. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think the other information is pretty much the same as well. Now here in the back, you notice you just have this picture and not this, this thing sort of going from left to right with uh, bone mode uh, and um, wild blast mode. This is actually on the side of the box. I just noticed it's a little hard to show because the camera is so close. Sorry about that. Here you go. See bone mode, regular mode, and I think this is called machine blast mode here. Um, otherwise, on the back, what we also have is this here. Um, there are these CP units coming out. I think that's what that is, but it also includes like additional armor for the uh, for the feet here, which would be nice to have. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how this works with these CP units. I'm gonna have to try to find out. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, it's it's a Zoids Wild box, even though it doesn't say Zoids Wild on it. So let's see what's in it. Uh, things are a little more cramped here than they usually are because I've been working on a lot of stuff. Including the Berserk Fuhrer, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay. Uh, insides look um, exactly the same as before. We've got the instruction booklet here. We've got this familiar um, pixel camo insert. Um, motor is standard so it's wild motor and we have one two three bags <clears throat> uh, yeah this looks the same as always so let's just go over what's in these baggies here a has three separate bags in it Two are dark gunmetal. One is silver. Let's take a look here. Um, let's see, what do we got? Okay. These are obviously the torso halves. Um, go together like this. The jaw is fixed. Um, yeah, looks a bit more looks a bit more mechanical and angular than we're used to you know there's a lot of like tubing here and this grill i mean it still has some of the design sort of features of um of zoids wild obviously uh but um looks a bit different cool and then we have these two which are obviously going to go on the side and drive the leg movement um with these ribs on the side here, this looks very Zoids Wild. Next bag looks to be mostly the legs. Uh, yeah, well, there's Zoids Wild legs, folks. I mean, they look nice, but as usual, no joints. And we got, uh, yeah, this is... Um, I'm looking at the instructions to figure out which are the front and which are the rear legs, but... Off the top of my head, I can't tell. Well, it doesn't matter. These are the legs. Uh, these are the other two. And um, the rest of the gunmetal bone parts include, obviously, that, wow, this is an angry-looking bull head here. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, these are the, the skull halves. That's, that's the uh, tail. Little blade on it there. And this uh, is the power switch. All right, um, silver. Oh, 
horns, a little detail here, a little detail on the back, totally hollow on the inside. I don't know, they're showing this off proudly on the box like it's a design feature, but... Uh, this is one of the guns here. Nice. And, of course, the hooves. Yeah, that's all the bone mode parts. Let's take a look at the, um... Let's take a look at the armor. I'm already seeing something I'm ambivalent about which is this. Eh. So, I mean, why am I groaning? Uh, because there's pre-painted stuff on here. I bought a second one of these uh, to paint, and I'm really looking forward to that because it's obviously a cool kit, but this, uh, I just hope I can strip this. Otherwise, I, I like it, you know, it's very sort of, it's. It's like, because it has this panel line here as well, that's just a design feature I like, to be honest, because it looks like old Dave Johnson drawings, which uh, is a reference that's not going to make sense to anyone, but I do. Uh, anyway, here we have the, uh, what looks to be the leg armor. And uh, I don't know, I get the impression something was missing here. Uh, anyway, these, these are the leg armor pieces. And this is the front hatch for the cannon that goes on the back. And oh, <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I, was just, I was just looking at the picture on the front of the instructions and thinking like that don't look right. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Um, there's in the, uh, in the camo insert here, there's another gearbox that goes on the back. And that's what I thought was missing. <laughs> oh man. Great unboxing, dude. Going real well. Okay, I'm just I'm just checking this here uh, to see if there's anything else I missed. So wow. Okay, this is this whole contraption here is all. I mean, it's gonna look cool in action. I can already tell because these are gonna move, obviously, and these are gonna rotate and um yeah. So that's that's like the cannon array that goes on the back. Uh, let's see, is this screwed together somewhere? Mm, doesn't look like there's a tiny little screw here, but uh, why am I looking at this, you ask? Because, like I said, I my plan is to paint this thing, and I have no idea what I'm going to do about this here. Anyway, uh, leg armor. Um, this is the hatch that goes on here somehow, and... Um, and finally, we have the S-bag here. Um, wrong blade, never mind. Uh, <laughs> here are, <laughs> it still comes with Zoid's wild style eyes, uh, which you're not going to see in the end, but um, we have a very standard motorcycle type pilot figure here. Um, these two crank pieces that are going to drive the leg movement. A uh, whole bunch of caps in the back here. I'm just going to leave these in here. Um, and, aha, this is the decal sheet. Now you can see it has a lot of these little warning symbols and stuff that we're used to from the old models and this really cool bull logo here, numbers, um, looking, definitely looking decidedly more military and that seems to be very on purpose. Of course, as an old school fan of Zoids, I'm very much on board with that. Anyway, that's it. That's everything that's in the box. I'm going to put this guy together and then we're going to take a look at it in action. And here's what that looks like. As you can see, it's nothing spectacular, but it's serviceable. It walks on the usual stiff little Zoids wild legs. The mouth opens and closes and that crank thing on the side of the gun turret rotates and that's that. But it's fine. I mean, it's a bull. What else do you want it to do? And here's blast mode. That clicking noise you're hearing seems to be intentional and, well, it's firing its guns, obviously. Turning this on is as simple as opening that hatch, by the way. The rest is taken care of by coil springs inside the turret. Also, here's a comparison to the Genesis Canon 4. The cannonball pretty much towers over it, and I also don't think they look all that similar otherwise. 
The D-Bison looks a bit more similar, just a good bit bigger, of course, and generally a bit more angular, but not that much. The biggest similarity is obviously this girder-like pattern in the leg armor, but it's really more of a slight callback than a total swipe. Anyway, I was really looking forward to this one, and it certainly doesn't disappoint. You could argue that it's a bit problematic how these new designs are starting to look more like the classic ones, because it hasn't really ever gone well when Takara Tomy tried to cash in on the nostalgia market. But honestly, I think it still looks like a Zoids Wild model, just in a good way, I guess. The overall design looks good, I love the militaristic collar, it doesn't have the cutesy proportions of some of the other models, and well, it has guns. And I'm sorry, but I've been sick of Zoids with blades at the very least since Genesis, so I'm on board here 100%. I also love how the cannons on the back move in blast mode, mimicking the recoil from being fired. I don't remember any of the classic models actually doing that, they just wave their cannons up and down, if anything. And I also like the visor hiding the eyes, even if I complained earlier about it being pre-painted. It just looks meaner and obviously a bit old school, but with a new twist, so like everything else, I don't think it's just nostalgia. Oh, and also, the new caps have rivets on them. I didn't bother looking at those during the unboxing, but I really should have. All things considered, I would actually say that this one has surpassed my expectations. Not only does it look better in person than I thought, the new machine blast mode is actually the best thing about it and something that is objectively cooler than what the old models did with their weapons. I might actually have a new favorite Zoids Wild model here. Well, and that's it for this one. Don't forget to click on all the youtube -y things under here and check me out on Patreon where you can still be uh, my first patron ever for just a dollar. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching and check back soon for my review of the Beast Liger. Robo shop.